part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdlight. You're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the man of tomorrow who's still recovering from his cough, but it is getting better. And with me, as always, the greatest man that I know, the man who makes other men cower in their caves as if they are still primordial soup crawling around like fish, Mr. James Cole. What's up, Superman Red? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man you push you you push it sometimes with those I just want to see if, I, if i can get you to like crack up before i can even finish it's it it makes me laugh but most of the time it just makes me speechless i don't know how to cut co- I, don't, I don't know how to come in off of that you know i think there'll be a day where you're like beepity beep tyler <laughs> like, like this what mother <laughs> what am i supposed to say uh welcome everybody we are just we're kind of taking it easy this episode. We thought <clears throat> we would get back into the swing of things and just kind of cover some Justice League action. You know, we're wrapping up the year. We just kind of want to do some fun things, and we have different episodes planned that are a little bit more laid back as we kind of readjust to our new format we had talked about by using utilizing the app more for comics. So we just thought we'd get caught up on some Justice League action. Now, I do want to throw a note out here. James and I were talking. And when we started this, I was using the order that IMDb had listed for these episodes. And the biggest difference we found was that James owns them on Amazon Prime. I own them on iTunes. Okay. And the first four episodes are all collected in one episode for us, which is the Shazam Slam. And so we were like, okay, that's the one that's going to throw us all off, right? But no, as we discovered, as we got into this block right here, we got a little confused because what was on IMDb that's in our notes was not what was playing in our viewing. So bear with us as we kind of fiddle through making sure that everything is linked up. So here we go. <coughs> Excuse me. The first episode out of the gate today is play date Saturday, December 17th, 2016. <coughs> when the justice league watchtower is invaded by toy man and his army of toys, Cyborg, Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman are turned into players in a twisted version of a fighting game. And now Cyborg will need all of his gaming skills to get out. James, this episode is one of the most fun. And I remember when this episode came out, Solomon was a little over a year. And we watched this one a lot. Yeah. Like I would play it on my phone when we're sitting in the car and stuff. Yeah, it, it's one of my favorites. Um, it's one that I one of the top ones I remember from this series. It's one of my favorites for a lot of reasons. I think we can talk, we can go into shortly. Um, Uh, But it's even one of Jamie's, it's even one of Jamie's favorites. She likes it too. When when they make them enter like games, like a fighting game and Batman's just like, I am Batman. And and they just, and, and Cyborg's just got this glee, like, he keeps doing the emote over and over and over again, and Batman gives him a look like, quit it. <laughs> and then I am Wonder Woman, and she gives this whole speech, and she's like, I like that. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's some really good moments in here. Um, you know, it just shows how good Cyborg is, for one. He's, you know, in the end, he's like, I was playing two games, this one and one with him. Um, how cyborg ends up saving the day but um uh batman pulls out the kryptonite ring to lay into superman and he's like you just carry that around (laughs) and (laughs) and then uh when when wonder woman is selected as a fighter we get we get a quick choose your skin moment choose your costume and you get to see a bunch of ways wonder woman was drawn in the comics over the decades um this they're all costumes that she wore at some point or another every single one of them um 
so that one's really cool. And then um, during that battle, Batman calls the Batmobiles, and in the background, um, there is um, there is the the Batmobile from Justice League Action. There is the uh, 1989 Batmobile. There is the animated series, the 90s animated series Batmobile, and there is the Batman Batmobile, which actually the animated in one the Batman. <laughs> yes, yes, the animated, not not the uh, not the Charger looking one uh, from the 20 <laughs> from the brand new movie. Just uh, yeah, right. Um, there is actually a funny thing in there that I noticed is during the background of that fight after, Oh, and it was the 1966 Batmobile. That was the one I missed. Um, because he calls the 1966 Batmobile in to, to, to hit wonder woman. Um, and so that one pulls off the top and goes in. And as the rack moves up, that's when you see 89, the animated series and the Batman, um, uh, uh, car. Um, but as, the 66 comes in in the background is the stock footage, the stock background with the 66 still at the top, the 89 below it. And then the animated series below that. But then the next scene where you see the background again, it is proper where the 89 is up top. The animated series is in the middle and the Batman is on the bottom. So (laughs) there's a small animated boo-boo in the background. Nice. I love catching that stuff. Yeah. It's so much fun. So this one is just fun, like how, you know, they talk about Cyborg's playing the game and he, Robin plays it all the time. And um, Cyborg, like, they're getting it, when it opens, there's like a cold opening where they're being attacked. And they're just, they're like, they are like trying to find out who is on watch and you just see Cyborg up, like the alarms are going off and he's just playing video games. <laughs> what have you been playing for? Dang, that long? <laughs> yeah, right. It's uh, that is funny though, because you know sometimes you can just get sucked into a video game and play for hours. And yeah, that never happened. I'm just I'm not a gamer enough for that to happen to me. Uh, but, and it's still Carrie Payton as Cyborg, which I love. Hey, me but, and my buddy, we were playing Final Fantasy VII back in the day, and we stayed up all night until sunrise to get that gold chocobo and go get that summon you could get with the go- with only the gold chocobo and after we went and got that thing we went to bed <laughs> last time i played games like that was ken griffey baseball for n64 that's all i'm saying <laughs> right. that was the first time i ever stayed up all night playing video games my friend had just got that for his birthday um <clears throat> the next episode repulse superman has been infected by the repulse who was really revealed relieved jesus revealed as lex luther and has now become the new repulse as wonder woman and hawkman try to find a way to save him superman must remove those nanobots from his body by sending him into a black hole before he gets pulled in as well that's a good summary of this one but i would say while superman and wonder woman are on a date Superman orders garlic risotto <laughs> and it is the worst decision of his entire life. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder Woman says, yeah, you shouldn't have ordered the garlic risotto. So they go to kiss and as they go to kiss, Superman's super hearing kicks in and he hears some danger and is like, we must go. So he takes off. And then of course, you know, they fight, they fight repulse and, you know, this this Lex Luthor is voiced by James Woods, and I will say I don't like James Woods voicing Lex Luthor. Um, it just doesn't work for me. And at the I, end, just to skip ahead, when they do finally go back to kiss, one of them was like, no. And he's like, the risotto. She's like, yeah, I should have ate the garlic risotto. <laughs> yeah. So that's the um, lesson, James. Don't eat go, garlic on a date. When you go on a date, and it's maybe a first date, early in the relationship, or whatever, you eat the most bland, tasteless, non-messy food possible. Right. Okay. Just a just a word of wisdom. Yeah. Uh, I, I some things I think is funny about this episode. Obviously, the garlic risotto. That whole thing is pretty good. Um, the fact that they're both they're they're on a date, 
with each other, both talking about the person that they like, you know, that he mm-hmm. likes Lois and, and she likes Steve um, and how Steve likes Wonder Woman, how Lois likes Superman, kind of like, you know, um, that secret identity thing still going on. But then they're there for a date with each other. Um, and then two things on James Woods. I think he's fine in a more high comedic role as as Justice League action is, mm-hmm. you know, very cartoony, very, you know, just just comic quips. Um but also the second thing was wasn't James Wood canceled by this time? <laughs> so I was just surprised to I was just surprised to hear him. <laughs> well, I'm trying to remember when it happened. I mean, but you got to think like when we talked to Jason That's, Day that Lewis, that crap doesn't stick in the freaking in Hollywood. But also, you got to think about when they started. They did the voice work for this, right? You know, and I'm trying to work backward. Like this premiered at you know this premiered at the end of 20. The first episodes premiered at the end of 20. December 16. of 2016, right? Mm-hmm. And so that means they were recording, you know, before that in probably 2015 and everything. Um, so, I mean, he, yeah, he could have done all of his work and then that thing happened. They were like, son of a gun. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, this one... It- Really, the biggest parts that stood out is like the date stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was my favorite part, like the black hole and like Hawkman. Hawkman, like seeing the two of them and like you're on a date, was pretty funny. Um, and their life is not a date; it is a date. Uh, <coughs> so I thought that was pretty awesome. That was my favorite stuff with this episode. Yeah. All right. The next hat trick, right? That's the next one. This is where it gets confusing, people. So bear with us. Uh, no, speed. Demon. No, the next one on and here was trick or threat. Okay, trick or threat. Yeah. So for for James and I, like I said, that's when this shows up. But on IMDb, it doesn't show it or, uh, shows up later, and it's really weird. So screw you, IMDb. Um, December 24th is what it says 2016 for the release date, but yet it's listed as the 18th episode. So take it with a grain of salt. Kane, the, the caretaker, tells the audience a Halloween story about the House of Mystery, where Batman, Zatanna, Constantine, and Dr. Fate are turned into 10 year olds by Clarion the Witch Boy. Now the 10 year old Justice League must find a way to defeat Clarion turn themselves back to being normal and escape the house of mystery before it disappears. Um, We covered this episode years ago, but for Halloween, because it was, but yeah, James thoughts. Um, I mean, I, I like this episode as well. Um, You know, I kind of watched these, the episodes we're talking about in a couple of blocks. Um, And this was, this was the the next best episode. Um, <laughs> I I do um, I like the Halloween bit of it. Um, yep. The thing I, I I love the Halloween bit of it. The trick or treating, um, the cast. You know, Zatanna, Batman, Doctor Fate, and John Constantine um, against Clary and the Witch Boy. Um, it's a Halloween staple in this house. It goes. Like I said, we kind of do a Halloween DC day. We watch this and then some Teen Titans Go stuff. Right. Um, and uh, the one thing that I really, really enjoyed about it that I laugh about every time I see it is it's young John Constantine. He's changed back in. Well, we find out that they're all changed back into 10 year olds, but they're still kind of the heroes that they were. Um, and John Constantine, we all know he's a smoker. Um, she's always got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. Um, but in this episode, he's a child. We can't, can't necessarily, and they're not even going to have him smoking as an adult. Um, 
but he he Isn't has like a, a hard rock or can- no it's a hard rock candy on a stick so it's the candy stick sticking out of his mouth and it's it's just a white stick sticking out of his mouth but i'm like like he's still got to have that you know what i mean <laughs> like and it's it totally works it's got to have something you know you got to have something we can't just be nothing so i love it I, it cracks me up because it's just I see I love stuff like this like we were talking about in our previous episode with Merry Little Batman where it just becomes like oh it's the holiday season I'm gonna go to a certain episode or something and this is such high quality that it's yeah it's a it's a staple uh, yeah uh, just you know the whole thing I mean it's perfect Halloween House of Mystery Constantine Clarion the Witch Boy Dr. Fate Zatanna and even Batman. And then you even, and it's really cool because you got Batman. You got this little 10 year old kid saying and giving you this look like he's Batman, but it's just 10 year old kid. <laughs> mm-hmm. It reminds me a little bit of the episode of Justice League. I think it was Justice League, uh, what do you call it? Unlimited, where they're fighting Mordred and Morgan Le Fay. And she turns them into kids. I, yes. I mean, Justice League and Justice League Unlimited just run together, especially when they they do the couple episodes where it's back to just the original team, right? <clears throat> and you know they're all kids again. So, um, yeah, love this episode. So, all right. Next then, one. What do we have on the next one on our docket? James? It is episode 11, um, Speed Demon. Speed Demon. Yeah, we're going to drop the numbers for now, but we're going to talk about... My speed. bad. <laughs> <laughs> Just because like it's all... Just jacked, titles right? in order. That's what yeah, we're going to do. I'll fix everything. To, <laughs> we'll make it more easy because I'll bust it out from there. We'll have it. Um, speed Demon. After defeating Harley Quinn, Batman and Zatanna... And Ke- Encounter Brother Knight, who used his dark magic to control the Batmobile, kidnapping Zatanna. With the help of Etrigan, the demon, Batman must save her, stop the Batmobile, and defeat Brother Knight. Um, this episode's okay. Like, I, I mean, I'm just, it's all about kind of like a cool car, hot rod kind of thing, you know? So it really wasn't my cup of tea. <coughs> Speaking of tea, Jenny is supposed to bring me some. Um, but yeah, what did you think of this one, Mike? Um, so I, I had to watch this one twice. Um, oh, that sucked that bad. No, no. Uh, <laughs> because I watched the first three and Alora was chilling watching, um, them with me. Uh, it was in the evening. And so when I, little backstory real quick, when I worked third shifts, uh, a number of years ago, when Jimmy and Bella were little, like, like one, two, two, three, little, you know, and I worked third shift and my ex would go to work. I would be at home with the kids. Mm. Well, part of the thing that, that I got through was I laid the kids against me. Like I was the back of a couch or, or pillows or something that, that you would just lay back on. And I closed the bedroom door and the kids would watch some TV. So when they got up and stuff, I would, I would be able to get a little bit of sleep, but as soon as they would get up and move, they would get off of me. I knew, and I would wake up. Mm. Um, so that has translated into a lifelong thing of, especially when my children are snuggled up to me, I get tired and I fall asleep. (laughs) So by the time this fourth episode came around, my eyes just shut. (laughs) Nice. I saw the beginning and I saw the end of the episode. So then I had to watch it again. (laughs) But, uh, yeah. Um, the thing I liked most about this episode was, Etrigan. Just uh I, I think there were some clever rhymes in, in this episode. Mm. Um uh, I mean other than that, it was, you know, kind of just like a 
a, a middle of the road episode. Um, you know, the villain wasn't uh, entirely um, enticing or funny um, or menacing. I never you know? remember Brother Knight before. Yeah, me neither. Um, so I kind of just went along with it. You know, uh, I mean, in the end, I think it would have been funnier if it came out of the out of the hubcap as that metal ball mm, and and, mm-hmm. f- and fell, you know, instead of just out of the fender of the Batmobile, because then at least it would have looked like the 1989 dropping the grenades and ace chemicals. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, um, but, uh, you know, Etrigan getting a, uh, ice cream truck turned into a speed wagon was kind of, was kind of funny. That is pretty dope, though. <laughs> but uh, I think that's most of the highlights, you know? Yeah, sounds like it. All right, the next one is... Hat Trick. Felix Faust steals Zatanna's hat in order to free a massive demon and get his youth back. While Batman and Etrigan face off against the demons, Zatanna uses every trick in her arsenal to get her hat back from Felix Faust. It's a nice little one to pair up with Speed Demon, though. Yeah. Yeah, those two back to back. <clears throat> it's like this. It's like a part two because it's the same grouping of uh, characters. Yeah, Batman, Zatanna, and Etrigan. Um, what's funny is I'll I'll, tell you, I'll admit this. I was watching this with the kids and stuff. Uh, me and Solomon were watching it, and what happened was. They were playing, and I kind of like had to step out and grab something. And came back, and I didn't realize the episode switched at first. <laughs> I thought it was still the same one. I was like, "Oh, cool!" I'm like, "Wait, wait, back it up, so we'll start over." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the this one I think is a little better of an episode than Speed Demon was. They're both rated. They're both rated a seven point four on IMDb. Um. So, I mean, maybe you got a 7.3 and a 7.4, 7.3 and 7.5. What's you funny know what I mean? <laughs> is John Cryer was Felix Faust, and Lacey Chabert was a ten. Mm. Um, well, heck, I mean, that's that. Maybe that's why um, Faust had some pretty good timing delivery for for his comedic lines. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. The the giant creature was very generic, you know, almost uh, bug or crustacean like, um, with like a demi gorgon mouth. Um, but I did like the uh, boy wonder joke that Etrigan gave him. Um, mm-hmm. The the BPS was kind of funny. Comes in handy more than you'd think. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, it, it's, it's good stuff yeah and then Zatanna of course like you don't know the spell to put the monster back Let's say it backwards of course like why not that, right <laughs> that's always fun to read Zatanna stuff yeah you're like oh what you're just see like, the thing yeah the thing with Zatanna like sometimes it just sounds like gibberish other times it does sound like they're saying the thing backwards Mm-hmm. And like, I think that I think that it's important to try and get that. You know what I mean? Practice something backwards over and over and over again, so you can deliver that line properly backwards. <laughs> I would just be like, "All right, <clears throat> I'm, gonna <laughs> <this>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna record this line, and then you're gonna flip my vocals." Ready? That's probably what they do. I mean, Honestly. you'd have to do it one word at a time because then if you flipped it backwards, you would flip the whole thing, I think. If I said uh, James likes dogs, then it would flip it backwards and be like dogs, you know, likes James or whatever, but backwards, whatever that would be. Dog yeah. Likes James. <laughs> um, so I just, the backwards speak is second only to the bizarro speak and then things that bother Tyler. <laughs> All right, James, what's the next episode you got? Uh, field trip. All right. See, this is like I said. This this is where everything gets crazy, people, because of the thing. But 
This episode is actually one of my favorites. Because as Superman gives Blue Beetle, Firestorm, and Stargirl a tour of the Fortress of Solitude, they run afoul with General Zod, Feyora, and an unidentified Kryptonian villain who are actually freed from the Phantom Zone. Now as Superman's trapped, now as Superman trapped inside, the three teen heroes must work together to stop the Kryptonian villains. The heat is on. <laughs> the heat is on. <laughs> I love that. The heat is on, and then he gets blasted in the back. <laughs> I, I just this was one that um I went back and watched because this is at a time um where Sela was, you know, liking watching Stargirl and I knew she was in this. So having Stargirl and then having Blue Beetle was just so much fun. And then having, you know, Zod and Feora. Yeah, I think everybody in this one's pretty good. Um, you know, obviously we get our Superman bits. Yeah, we, we, uh, we, we live for this. <laughs> for sure. Um, Blue Beetle, uh, uh, Stargirl, um, and, and, and uh, Firestorm, uh, you know, General Zod and Feyora. Everybody's really good in this. Um, I think the the way that it is developed, you know, we kind of get a... And in, in, in media res, um, the Kryptonians are fighting. This is what happened. Um, or the, the Kryptonians are attacking. And then this is what happened. Um, and then and then we're right back in it. Um, you know, the 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 chemical the the chemical makeup of kryptonite that little scene where firestorm is freaking out is really comical yeah um and like it's actually it's interesting how they're like you think that little sliver of kryptonite would do anything like that puts superman on his ass that little slipper sliver of kryptonite you know what i mean mm -hmm. <laughs> but then he has to then he makes the whole whole bunch of snow into kryptonite um firestorm is a very formidable villain or hero that could be a horrible villain if they like you had the right writer come in and really use him <sighs> absolutely excuse me you're fine uh yeah really it's it's a really fun episode um and you know all the problem starts with an alien kitty and then it's all said and done and she's like Ooh, alien kitty. <laughs> it's almost like Starfire from Teen Titans Go. Mm -hmm. In addition to his credited voice role as Superman and Zod, Jason J. Lewis also performed the uncredited role of Quiol or Quex Ol, the hulking Kryptonian villain. This role had no dialogue, consisting entirely of grunts, groans, and howls. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know Jason J. Lewis did all three voices. So yeah, he, he did Zod. Fantastic. The man is good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to check it out again. Yeah. It is neat to kind of go back and listen to it after learning that. You're like, hold on. Yeah. And you know, that's the beauty of these episodes being 10 and 11 minutes, you know, um, you can just throw them on and, and, and just watch them real fast. I mean, hell, hell sometimes at work, you could just <coughs> pop it on, step off of the floor for, 10 minutes, watch the thing, and go back. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. I do know what you mean. Slacker. <laughs> um, is there any more that you watched? Uh, the last one I watched was Luther in Paradise. All right. Like I said, people, like we, we got thrown off here, so we're trying to make sure that we both are on the same page here. So, All right. Luther in Paradise. Lex Luther and Cersei invade Themyscira home of the Amazons, to obtain a staff that leads to the fallen realm and an artifact of the Greek gods. With help from Superman and Batman, Wonder Woman must find a way to stop those villains before it's too late. Just a t -t Luther in paradise. <laughs> Cheeseburger in paradise. Cheeseburger. <laughs> um, See, that, that was in my head. I'm not going to lie. So this one is really <laughs> funny being James Woods as Luther. Um, he gets the Oculus of Argo. He gets this long flowing hair and he loves it. He even <laughs> does this two handed hair flip. It was hilarious. It was hysterical. Um, 
but him talking about wanting to go take over Olympus and everything, you know, I'm like, man, he's just doing Hades again. And it's great. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> um, right. Hercules. I love that movie. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> this is basically Disney Superman, but whatever. Um, yeah, this one was fun. And I guess, you know, in retrospect, like this, I guess it works better for um, him as um, Luther here compared to, you know, anywhere else. But yeah, his Luther was just kind of difficult to deal with for me a little bit because. Right. Well, I mean, in animation, we got freaking Clancy Brown, got um, uh, uh, Tony LaPazia, whatever Italian last name that is. Uh, Sorry for anybody listening. (laughs) They're like, I'm going to beat that guy up. I'll tell you his address. Just text me. (laughs) (laughs) <clears throat> my address is um I'll give him the address that's saved in my phone, James. Right. <laughs> there you go. I, you you changed that. <laughs> Dang it, I did. Never mind. <laughs> right. <laughs> Inside joke, people. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> No, it was it was a funny episode. This was a good one. Like I said, Luther was hysterical in this one. Okay. He totally he totally nailed it for me. Um especially once he got the oculus um but uh superman and batman show up and it's like these amazons can be prickly and they all just point spears and arrows at them um and and just it's like you men on our island and and uh it's like these are your friends and more like sidekicks and then they help save the day and just, they have names mother and and she gives them the names and then she's she's like thank you batman thank you superman or whatever um like paraphrasing and then she's like get off my island <laughs> before my guards run you through is it, it was funny james is like i just want to be on that island <laughs> that is paradise <laughs> i'll just i'll just live over here to the side don't even notice i'm here especially the island um uh, with from from the uh, 2017 Wonder Woman movie. Yeah, the island that looked mm. real compared to I, I will say, the island in Zack Snyder's Justice League felt really weird, but whatever. That's another conversation. It it looked it looked scaled up, and on this it looked scaled up to this epic degree. You know what I'm saying? It was the other side of the island. Yeah. Also, also known as not a real location shooting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The 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 stuff they did in Wonder Woman was like them living on the island. You know, mm-hmm. like there's a real world here. They train and they and they live. They eat. They work. You know, and in that one, it's you know, like you said, the other side of the island, the 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 side of the island that people don't go to because that's where the box is where. You it's never being go guarded. There. Yeah, where it's being guarded. You never go guarded. there, Simba. That's the shadowy place. <laughs> right. All right. All right. Well, <clears throat> this is such a fun series, and I hate that it's a lost series, and that enough not enough people are really talking about it, and it's just kind of gotten lost. Like I'm sitting here, and uh, on my desk right here is I have the 12 inch Justice League action Wonder Woman figure, and then on my shelf above me. I have the Lex Luthor, um, and then on my Superman shelf is the Superman Justice League action figure, the 12 inches. And I know that they made like smaller scales, and I never got any of those. And then um, I know that Solomon got Plastic Man, and we have Flash, and we have Batman. I think is all we have from the Justice League action. Because there's some of them that were supposed to come out that I never saw in store. And then they were gone fast. Mm. Like I found the Luther Mark clearance out, and then I found Wonder Woman at Ollie's. Um, uh. So I mean, they went f- like it's kind of like the super uh, the superhero girls stuff. Like they here they are, guys, and then they're like and clearance. Mm. 
Right. And you were, I was like, right when Sayla got hooked, I went back to get her a car, a doll, and they were gone. Mm, yeah. Well, you know, he's, uh, not enough people are talking about it. We just talked about seven episodes mm-hmm. and two of them, maybe we did, you know, weren't the greatest, but five of them we, we love, you know? Yeah. At least five of them. I really, really liked four. I loved, you know, so Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely, definitely a good show, and it and it's great to watch, you know. And the 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 run times the run times help, um, especially if you just want to throw something on, watch something real quick. Maybe you and the kids just knock something out ten twenty minutes. You know. You're absolutely right. I just want to throw this out here real quick. Um, this is really weird because I wanted to check something and I wanted to like reference, cross reference something. I was trying to pull the information. Um, <clears throat> so the DC superhero girls, the second, like the actual series, not the just movie films. Right. Are no longer available from my digital retailer of iTunes. Like, I own the second season, and the first season used to be on Netflix, and I was kind of just looking something to cross-reference here, and uh, I was like, it said, you know, purchase more, and I was like, okay, I'll pull up the first season real quick to check something out, and it says no longer available from your digital sailor. That's so interesting to me. Hmm. How, like we're Is talking it about, still on Netflix? I haven't, I haven't checked. I'm looking at right now to see if the first season is still there. No, it's not. Oh, that's awful. And this is why. I mean, this is why we buy physical. Okay. Yeah. You know, these things just move. They they're gone. You know. And they take stuff, and then, they, and then like you said, they disappear, and then you're like, oh. Why can't I find this? Um, and that's so crazy because it's not available anywhere. And it's not even, like, I don't know if it's available to buy on Amazon Prime or not. Yeah, I'm actually looking. Because <clears throat> I was thinking, oh, I should probably buy the first season at some point. Um, now I'm concerned. Hmm. It does say Justice League Action is on, one season is on Amazon Prime to stream. It is saying, well, just searching for it on Roku, the only place available to watch it for free is Happy Kids TV. For what? It's an app called Happy Kids. No, I mean, oh, like, DC Superhero Girls. Happy Kids? Hmm. I think it's something we have on here for the for the kids. There's all kinds of weird apps like that on Amazon. Quick but change, it, with that for... being the case, then it's probably not available to buy um, anywhere like Amazon Prime. Because normally that would come up. Yeah, so it looks like Justice League action. Just for our listeners, we kind of like to is on Amazon Prime. It looks like so you can you can go, and it seems like DC's been selling a lot of stuff to Amazon Prime to to watch. <clears throat> um, so yeah, check that out. So you can follow along with us, and it looks like season one. See, wasn't that a super? Wasn't that a, a Cartoon Network show? Like, yeah. why is it not on Max? Uh-huh. Why is it not under the DC brand label on Max? Yeah, there's a lot of things, James, going on right now. That doesn't make sense. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah. So, I'm really bummed right now that when I go to Superhero Se- Girl Season 1 on Prime, it says this video is currently unavailable. Uh-huh. So, it's a bummer. 
it is a bummer because I was going to buy a season. Two. Now I'm actually pissed because um, I wanted to rewatch some of that with Sayla. But anyways, that is our show. Thank you for tuning in. And remember. Look up in the sky. We just want to say if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. What's up, everybody? Chase Smith here from the Chase Smith Podcast and Cavs on the Break NBA Podcast. And I'm JD, host of the Hyman Podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. And we are super excited to bring you a brand new show starting next Tuesday, the Fanfare Podcast. The Fanfare Podcast is all about your favorite movies and our favorite movies and the best moments in cinema. To help guide our discussion, each episode will feature one classic. And we will grade this movie using a report card-like scale A through F. We're going to be grading categories like acting, directing, cinematography, the score, and even the movie poster itself. And we're not featuring a movie report card. We'll be sharing our movie rankings, franchise deep dives, actor and director interviews, and everything in between. Movies have been a major part of our lives, and we cannot wait to share our thoughts with you. Our premiere episode will drop Tuesday, June 27th, and JD and I will be reviewing Raiders of the Lost Ark in preparation of the release of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny on June 30th, the fifth installment of the franchise. Join us on the Fanfare Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. Here at Krypton Report, we believe in the power of podcasting, the power of speaking your voice and speaking something that comes from you. So here's a couple of podcasts you can check out with people sharing their voice. I am Brian Peters, the creator and host of Gravely Amusing. For the past 30 years, I've studied the history of gods and monsters in pop culture and our world. As a student of theology and history, I've tried to understand evil and its impact on us. As a writer, I've tried to share this knowledge. As a comedian, I've tried to make people laugh as I do it. But as a man-child, I'm still that scared seven-year-old boy. Join me as I share the history of horror and sci-fi, discuss classic and modern pop culture, and share a creepy story or two. This podcast may scare you, it may horrify you, or it may leave you gravely amused. Listen to Gravely Amusing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and wherever podcasts are found. Follow us on Twitter at Gravely underscore Amusing or on TikTok at Gravely Amusing. Hi, I'm Taria Maynard, and this is my co-host, Jania Patrick. We're a couple of sisters in Central Ohio who created a podcast. Our podcast is called The Confessing Heretics. The basic premise of the podcast right now, as we see it, is we're going to talk to you guys about um, our stories in religion, would you say? Mm-hmm. Um, this podcast is about sharing our truths, our religious traumas, and our histories. We'd love for you to join us on our journeys as we talk about our pasts and discover more about ourselves along the way. We will be featured on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Just look for The Confessing Heretics. We have a $1 Patreon. Yes, I know everyone asks for money, but our $1 Patreon each month gets you commentary tracks for releasing movies, DC movies, it gets you my requel series where I pitch ideas about movie sequels, prequels, or whatever. It also gets special bonus episodes of whatever else some of the friends of the network chime in and drop. So check that out for $1 a month. That's all we ask. Keep it cheap. Keep it simple. 
and help us keep going. Check out the link in the show notes or Patreon Krypton Report. Follow the link in the link tree or in the show notes below, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report.